So, did you like the second episode? I did. You yeah. did? How much did you like it? How much? Mm, pretty much. <laughs> it was good, yeah. Okay, I so enjoyed it. You enjoyed it? Yes. Okay. So, the basic theme of the episode was the continuing disintegration and falling apart of the Seven Kingdoms. Mm -hmm. Lords and kings continue to drop like flies. There was a recurrent theme in this uh, episode. Mm -hmm. Uh, of king slaying. King slaying. Mm -hmm. Slaying your own family. Uh, it's like a civil war. The worst feud is family feud. And uh, every civil war is basically like a family feud, you know, between and the. And if the family kills itself. Okay, so let's start with the first death in the north when Ramsey kills Rus. I felt this was like, uh, like they were saying, uh, chop, chop, yeah. people have to die. Yeah, people let's have get to over die. with this, yeah, <laughs> let's get over it. Oh, there's a plot hole. <laughs> oh, there's another one. <laughs> so Ramsey killed his father yeah. on a whim. So, and we said that Bruce is not afraid enough of his son. Yeah. And he paid for it with his life. Mm -hmm. And also he killed uh, his father's wife, Wald Frey. Yeah. And the air. Let's uh, not forget that between the Boltons and the Frey there is an alliance set in uh, the, the marriage between Rus Bolton and uh, Walda Frey. And which allowed Rus to control the north. Yeah, yeah. It was all the behind the scenes arrangement that led to the Red Wedding. Right. And now this alliance is uh, broken. And, By Ramsey. Uh, we, yeah, and we know that uh, Walder Frey, the old Frey, He's not a sympathetic uh, guy and he's uh, very eventful, but... Yeah, uh, he's not very forgiving. Yeah, but uh, never mind, it happened this three seasons ago, so <laughs> who remembers that? When, when Walda gave the baby to Ramsey, just, he was born like an hour ago or something like that. Like every new parent knows that when you have a newborn, you are very reluctant to, uh, to have other people hold it, even if it's your family. Yeah. And you're like, okay, okay, you can have it. And then to Ramsey, and then oh, you breathe a sigh of relief, of relief. He will not kill the baby. The dogs will. The dogs will. <laughs> now, apparently, the Boltons hold the north. They have uh, three houses behind them. The Karstarks, mm -hmm. remember them from season uh, two, three. The Umbers, we remember them as well, maybe. And the Manderleys, we only know them from the books. Yeah. So basically, it appears that they hold the north. Or do they? Mm -hmm. Another thing that happened in the North this episode is that Theon wants to go home mm. to the Iron Islands. Mm. So let's go to the Iron Islands. Brother killing a brother. Mm -hmm. So you're going to kill the king of the Iron Islands. And now there is a snap election because yeah. they have to choose a new king. A king's moot. King's moot hype. King's moot hype. Yeah, yeah. I'm okay. really looking forward to it. Okay. For those who didn't read the books, uh, King's Moot is like a convention, mm -hmm. a contested convention, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, that uh, they basically choose or elect. Like each one of them says, hey, vote for me because blah, blah, blah. Yeah, like I will that. promise you rape. I will, I will rape more than you. <laughs> I will rape and kill and eat the children. I will kill them again and rape them again. I will eat them and then I will barf them out. I will <laughs> rape the barf okay. and I will eat the barf. <laughs> because there's no a legitimate heir to the Iron Islands because Yara is a woman. Yeah. And Balon has no surviving sons. Mm. Maybe that's why Theon is going back. He doesn't know. Yeah. <laughs> Looks like Euron just came back from uh, his uh, Odyssey. Odyssey? Mm hmm You know, like Odysseus mm. from the book The Odyssey. I like the show better. No. No. Okay. They spoiled it. <laughs> <laughs> he went uh, around the world. We don't know why he left, but he traveled around the world. And, and like Odysseus, that asked to be tied to the, post, the pole. To the pole. So he can hear the sirens, but he will not go to them. Yeah. So he was <coughs> uh, tied to the pole uh, as well because he went mad for some reason. Mm. So he basically wants to be king. He thinks he's he's God. Like there is the Rolo, the Lord of Light, and the Great Other that cannot be named. So okay. the Iron Islanders okay. also have this dualistic religion. Okay. Like their own god, which is like the creator or something like that. The drowned god. This is this drowned god. 
and the the enemy of the drowned god is the storm god. And when oh, Euron says, I am the storm. I am the danger. I am the one who knocks. Mm -hmm. So he's a little bit uh, crazy. Yeah. Probably will have an, an army and a fleet. Maybe. Maybe. If he will win the elections. Yeah. I don't know. The Poles are, uh, I don't know. And don't trust the Poles. Come on. I don't know. Like Yara, she's been there for, it's, it's her turn. It's her turn. I'm with her. So let's continue the family feuding. The Lannisters are feuding apparently at the start of the episode when the Lannister soldiers bar Cersei from attending her own daughter's wedding. Ah! You mean funeral? Funeral wedding. But then we learn that Tommen was actually really behind stopping his mom because he's afraid he's a little boy and he want her. He wants her to make him brave. Yeah, looks like he's trying. He's trying to uh, grow a pair. Cersei looks uh, still a little uh, depressed. A little depressed. And uh, I like the way uh, she was uh, passive, passive aggressively, bringing her son back mm. to her. It's okay, it's not Tommen. That's okay. I love you. <laughs> oh, 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 oh! I will kill them all. I will kill them all. Uh, Cersei asked Tommen, which uh, what kind of shroud uh, Myrcella was wrapped in. Right. The golden on the red, and or the red. And okay. he told her the golden shrouds. Okay. Like the prophecy. Gold will be their shroud. Ah. Gold will be their crown. Boom, boom, boom. And then when everything is taken away, away from you, By. the Valon Quar will come. So Cersei is still very passive, but she has someone who is being active for her. The monster, the mountain, formerly known as the mountain, yeah. walks around killing people finding some uh, trolls huh. uh, to uh, cut their freedom of speech. Yeah. To hurt their freedom of speech. And Jamie still doesn't know what's going on. Yeah, what's... Uh, Nobody... He didn't, he didn't no ask one told anyone. Him, yeah, no, Why yeah. was Cersei in prison? Oh, Who like, gave her away? No, he's probably like, wow, Cersei was in prison? Oh, that makes sense. She's an <laughs> evil bitch. Yeah. And we see... Uh, like the high burning, he's, uh, he's kicking some ass. Yeah, he's yeah. kicking some ass. When we stand together, we will transform America. And that is what this campaign is about. It's bringing people together. Yeah, he's not afraid. He's not afraid. He's taking on big money, mm -hmm. big house. He doesn't play the game. He said to, to Jamie, you want to kill me? Why not? Yeah. Okay, so now let's talk about the wall. Uh, let's wait for that. Okay, so let's go to Bravos. Wax on. Wax off. Wax on. So Bran, Bran is back. He's dreaming with Mr. Raven. Bran and the three-eyed raven sitting in the heroin, de heroin den. Inside crack den? The crack den inside the tree. Okay. They see Ned as a boy, mm -hmm. and his older brother, and his older sister, and his Hodor. We see also uh, old Nan, right. or young Nan. <laughs> 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 we discover uh, that Hodor is not a simpleton, as uh, we thought. Maybe when he was young, someone touched his Hodor. Please, Willis, show me on this doll where the bad man touched you. Odor! Here he touched you. Odor! But uh, the child of the forest tells uh, Mira right. that Bran is not going to stay there uh, forever. And we thought he will stay in the yeah. tree. But maybe she's just saying that because she wants her to come in so Bran can eat her. Mm. So, switching gears from magic to magic. The dragons. We see the dragons in Meereen. Tyrion wants to go down and see the dragon. He releases them of their shackles, mm -hmm. and, then he told, and then he tells Varys, if I ever want to do it again, please punch me in the face because it's stupid. Mm -hmm. Which begs us to think that Varys will do it. Varys will yeah. do it. I think they set up uh, this uh, fact about dragons that doesn't necessarily exist uh, in the books, mm -hmm. that uh, dragons can like you, even though you're not a, tar a Targaryen. Right. In the books, it's pretty much explained that uh, if a dragon is nice to you, maybe you have this uh, little bit of uh, Valyrian or Targaryen blood. Right. But there, Tyrion, uh, you know, we basically says you don't have to be a secret Targaryen right. in order for the dragons to like you. Right. Just because because Missandei, be yeah. they were nice to her. Yeah. So, so they're so like, uh, you know, tigers or tigers in a cage or something like that. If they recognize you, 
they, they, they will not kill you yeah, nine times out of ten. Yeah. So now there is nothing else to talk about but the wall. So we are at the wall. We see the wildlings taking over the wall. One one. One one smash. <laughs> one smash. They come just at the right time. People in this world have a perfect timing. Yeah, it's amazing. They know exactly when to come. Not too soon, not too early. Mm -hmm. Because they the want... moment they need them, they just appear. It's amazing. It's amazing. Okay, so Davos went to Melisandra. Mm -hmm. She's depressed. She's not funny or witty anymore. Yeah. She's not making jokes or telling obscure things that you need to, whatever, decipher. She doesn't want to play the game anymore. And he says, come on! I saw you! You burnt Shireen! Stannis is dead because of you! Ah, he doesn't say that? Mm, that's weird. <laughs> <laughs> we've done it before, we've been through this, we can do it! No, no, we can't. Yes! Yes, you can do it! <laughs> you can do it! <laughs> and then, she goes over yeah. there. And she does her magic. Speak some Hebrew. People don't know, but uh, Melisandre spoke uh, in Hebrew. Which was incredible. Mm -hmm. So tell them what she said. No, it's really important to us. Our Uzbekistan. And then she does some voodoo. Habada, habada. Habada, habada. Titorer, hachshava, niya, irot, cha, mishnat, cha. Clear! <laughs> I wonder how many uh, discussions there will be mm. about uh, the moment that uh, Melisandre took uh, John's hair okay. and burned it. Okay, what is it to discuss? Did the hair burn? <gasps> Did it burn? Did it burn? Why wouldn't it burn? Because he's a secret Targaryen! You're a secret Targaryen! You're a secret Targaryen! Everybody's a secret Targaryen! Oh my god! <laughs> so John is alive! Yeah. On episode two, episode. you said episode eight. Episode eight, come on. I said maximum of five episodes. You're right. <laughs> I wouldn't be proud, you know, <laughs> being uh, on the same side uh, uh, with Dan and Dan. So he's alive. He's alive. Episode two. Mostly That's alive. Mostly alive. That's so soon. Yeah. So he didn't work to Ghost. There is no connection with Ghost whatsoever. I expected that when he will come back, there will be some kind of an explanation of his connection with Ghost. He's working with Ghost or something so like that. So no working with John. So it means I was wrong. No working yeah. with I Arya. Think, yeah, I think Bran is the only... <laughs> I think Bran is the only Worgen uh, character in this story, unfortunately. Why? Why didn't they have, why didn't they have him work into Ghost? That would have been so yeah. awesome. I thought this scene could have been better yeah, of him coming better. back to life. Yeah. They didn't even have to show him Worgen and with the point of view of, uh, of a wolf. Just, you know, short reaction shot, you know, uh, Ghost wakes up. No, but he did do like... Yeah. Why not just having Ghost waking up? Sitting on top of John, licking his face or something like that. That would be dramatic, you know, and nice. Okay, so there's a lot to look forward to for episode three. John is alive. I was in shock. I thought he would be dead. They, they checked his uh, wounds. Come on. How can you survive something like that? No, that's, a, that's a major plot hole. It's a plot hole. Yeah. You screwed it up. You fucked it up. <laughs> Come on! He's dead. Okay, so let's wrap it up. Subscribe to get our episode 3 prediction video later this week. Subscribe and like if you enjoyed the video. Let's get to a thousand likes. Why not? Why not? A thousand likes. Come on. Come on. And also, we'll do a Euron video. Breaking down Euron, finding historical inspirations and the like. Uh, and we want to thank our patrons. Thank you, patrons. Some of them are here. If you want to support and sponsor our channel, we would be very happy. There's a link in the description to our Patreon page. Check it out. And if you want to learn more about the relationship between the faith and the kingdom, church and state, you should definitely watch this video. And if you want to check out our predictions for brand this season, here it is. Brand. Church and State, Church and State brand. Come on. So we'll see you all next time. Bye, everybody.
Woo! <gasps>